Okay, problem two. Um, and, you know, I've, I've given this problem in previous years for review, and uh, people said, wow, is this a true story? And I said, yes, it is a true story. And so now I'm writing true story at the front of the problem to emphasize that. So this is uh, something that happened to me in college. We went out to Chinese, caf Chinese food at this uh, restaurant in Houston, Chinese Cafe, which is just a bunch of cheap but actually quite good Chinese food. And you get a whole bunch of food, and, uh, you know, you'd have your big table here, and you'd have people sitting around it, and, you know, here's me, and there's a friend, and, you know, and there's another friend, and... Here's an attractive young woman saying, ooh, ooh, Mr. Smith, you are so attractive. Um, and so here is, no, that didn't actually happen, sorry. Um, and so in the middle, you'd have a Lazy Susan, which is this rotating tray. Um, and you'd put your dishes, put the, like the different, uh, you know, meats and sauces and stuff on there. And then everybody would have their bowl of rice, and you'd just sort of spin it around, grab some, whatever you want, put it in your bowl, and then eat it, you know? Um, this looks more like Boy George now that I think about it rather than a woman, so I don't know what that says about me. Anyway, and you guys probably have no idea who Boy George is, so great. Um, anyway, so uh, uh, the point was we went to Chinese Cafe and, and we ate a whole lot. I was really full, and then we're driving home and we, we passed by this supermarket and they've got this traveling carnival in the supermarket uh, parking lot, and so uh, you know, we, we get into this ride and we go, it's, it's just this big cylinder, and so this is like a top view, and here's people standing against the walls of the cylinder, and then it starts spinning, and, you know, I don't remember how fast it really spin, spun, these are just uh, numbers, uh, fifth period may have gotten different numbers, so be, then I realized with fifth period it was too wimpy, so now I've got these numbers, and they spun around, and, you know, the idea is you would press against the, you'd be pressed against the walls by the, uh, you know, the the normal force in the back of the walls, and we'll learn all about that next unit. Anyway, um, and yeah, then I got sick afterwards. But anyway, um, and, and what was neat about this was actually at the suggestion of one of my friends, uh, you know, just like a two years ago, and this was, or three years ago, and this was way after, you know, we this was decades ago we did this, uh, but one of my friends who was on that trip then, uh, you know, we were talking one night, and, and she said, you know, you could actually turn that entire thing the entire evening into a circular motion, uh, like worksheet or quiz or something. And in fact, that's what I did when I was student teaching. Uh, we had like a car, you know, we, we drove out in my friend's uh, Volkswagen Beetle, you know, and this was before like the Beetle Renaissance. So this was like the original Volkswagen Beetle, the sort of the, the lumpy car, you know, uh, and she got a flat tire. So we had to get out and change the flat tire. And I had some questions in the, um, you know, in this quiz I did when I was student teaching a couple years ago about like turning the, the, handle, the crank on the, the tire uh, iron, yeah, the tire iron, right. So, you know, all these uh, all these questions came up, and they made the Lazy Susan question, and I would use it now, except that the way we do, the order we do things in TJ, we don't do forces until after we've done sort of the kinematics of centripetal motion. So uh, a lot of these questions were sort of force-related, and I can't ask you those yet. But anyway, okay, so on this ride, uh, the this thing is spinning at a rate of 20 RPM. So 20 RPM. And we want to find, first of all, you know, to find, uh, find the acceleration, we've got the radius, right? We, we just need to find what omega is, because then we can say the acceleration is going to be omega squared times r, or the magnitude of the acceleration, right? Omega squared times the radius. So uh, we use our handy little thing here. Omega is 2 pi over t. Remember, omega is an angular velocity, so it's a rate at which the angle, or which this thing is going through angles, uh, it's in radians per second, so you have 2 pi radians divided by, which is how much you have in one circle, divided by the time it takes to go in one circle. So 20 RPM, uh, that means that your period is 3 seconds, right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So um, omega is 2 pi over 3 seconds, so that is going to be uh, 2 pi is 6.28-ish. Uh, yeah, roughly 2, 8, 1, 4, 1, 5. Eh, we really round up to 8, 5. Over 3 seconds, okay? So this is uh, radians per second. And then you'll get, like, oh, let's see. Mm, you get omega is 2.095. Radians per second, right? Okay. So then, just to find the acceleration, uh, acceleration is uh, 
omega squared times r. So 2.095 squared is going to be like, oh, I don't know, let's see, almost 0 0.1, 2 point, well, 2.1 squared, 2.1 squared. I, I could pull out the calculator, but I'm being lazy. Yeah, this this counts as lazy for me. Um, so it's going to be like 4.4-ish. Uh, give or take. Okay, so it's going to be about 4.4 uh, 4 is going to be your omega squared. Um, boy, I hope I'm doing this right. Times 4.00 meters. So this is going to be, oh yeah, actually this is working out. Okay, so so acceleration is going to be approximately for 16, 17.6 meters per second squared. Okay, and if we use, uh, now th this is, you know, your acceleration uh, your centripetal acceleration meters per second squared. And you can look at that and see that's bigger than g, right? So we're experiencing more than one g. When we express acceleration in g's, all you do is uh, you take your a over and you divide it by g, okay? So, um, and I am going to just use 10 for g, so we're going to be looking at about 1.76 g's of acceleration, okay? Which means you know, we're experiencing that much. Now, somebody has asked me, or several people have asked me, well, what about the normal acceleration of gravity? I mean, the, the ordinary, you know, gravitational pull of the Earth. And so, don't, you know, don't you have to add that in here somehow? And the answer is, yes, you do, actually. Um, and I'm not going to, you know, it's not something we expect you to know right now. In the next unit, we'll see how, um, if, you, if I was in this ride and my back was to the wall, then what I would feel effectively, um, or the net force on me, there would be, well, not really, but what you would feel is kind of like 1.76 g's this way and 1 g this way. And so the total, what you would feel is like the total, you know, uh, weight-like force acting on you, you'd feel uh, basically the vector combination of these two would be what you would sort of perceive as your weight. Um, so the number of g's really would be probably close to 2 if you look at like 1.76 squared plus 1 squared. It's probably going to come out to like 2 g's. So you'd feel like 2 g's in an angle, but that's that's all for, for later work. Don't worry about that. Uh, this is really just the answer I wanted you to get. So that's the whole story. Oh, yes, and then um, we got back to campus. We After this ride, I was fine, actually, right after the ride. We got into Karen's uh, VW Bug. This looks like a future car, but it was it was a Volkswagen Beetle. And we got back to campus, and I was fine the whole way back. And then we pulled into the parking lot, Karen parked, and I stepped out of her car and bleh, all over the pavement. But it was the right place to go because Karen didn't have to clean it up. Probably nobody had to clean it up. Just rain came, and why am I thinking about this? Anyway, I'll move on to problem three.